Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. This is the last episode being taped in June, and I'm still screaming happy pride. So I didn't talk about this before. I don't even know why. Um, It's fairly recent, but New York City is set to open its first ever youth LGBTQ homeless shelter. The first lady, mayor's wife, Sherlane McRae, made the announcement at the end of May that there's a $9.5 million investment towards addressing LGBTQ homeless in the city. That's a big plus because I've always said that there needs to be somewhere for the LGBTQ youth. Like there's homeless shelters for battered women. There's regular just homeless shelters. There's veterans assistance and all this stuff. And I feel like the LGBTQ community gets overlooked because I don't know if people don't realize it or they don't care or they don't understand that a lot of LGBTQ people are homeless, especially the youth, because they come out to their parents at an early age or someone outs them or whatever the case is and now they're homeless their parents have abandoned them they've been kicked out possibilities are endless so the fact that new york city saw that there was a need for that she saw that there was a need for that and did something for it i mean that's great so it's saying that the shelter for young new yorkers up to the age of 24 i'm wondering where the starting age is i didn't see anything about that portion but I'm guessing anywhere between 16 or something. Well, actually, no, I think 16 to 18, you'd probably end up in foster care or something of the sort because you're still technically a minor. But after that, up until 24, you're able to participate or be aided by the shelter. It's primarily to address homelessness among young LGBTQ New Yorkers. Other initiatives that are part of this investment includes expansion of services at three youth drop-in centers. So basically, because I know that there are clinics and areas that are set up for the lgbtq youth but there's nothing where they can actually stay so like they said an article drop-in centers like you can stop by and like get basic necessities you can go to like a food um donation place or like a cabela's house or whatever it is like the i forgot what they're called places where people like a soup kitchen that's the word and you know you can get food and you can go wash off or you can hang out at, like a youth center or whatever the case is but it's gonna have one youth drop-in center open in every borough. Wow. Expansion of training for parents and caregivers to become peer-to-peer advocates for families struggling with accepting an LGBTQ member. Clinical training program that will look into recruit clinicians of color from diverse neighborhoods across the city and train them in family acceptance work and to create bilingual Spanish-speaking family support services for LGBTQ Latin youth. That's amazing, you know what I'm saying? I like that they're trying to be inclusive with the family as well. It's not just, okay, they kicked you out hey that's it they're actually trying to reach out to families and say hey this is how you deal with a situation like this this is how you approach the fact that your child loves differently or your niece or nephew or whatever the case is so i mean i'm i'm really happy about that because it is something that is needed i didn't like Y'all know I'm not looking up statistics because the numbers are going to make me like really think about why people are so horrible. But homeless youth, it is a huge thing. Like it's a huge thing. It's not just, oh, I ran away from home because I was upset or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not being able to be yourself entirely and having to live a secret life or pretending to be somebody you're not basically just to be accepted by the people that are supposed to love you off automatically like that your family are the people that should love you you know what i'm saying nobody else don't care about them like other friends and acquaintances or whatever like people come and go but family that's the people that you know what i'm saying you're born into relation with these people is not you don't have a choice to be related to people so it's that's deep you know what i'm saying so they're saying that it's the next step you know what i'm saying a better new york and all that fun stuff there's a statement that says that, you know, we're especially gratified to see a commitment to fund youth shelters for young people up to ages 24, as there is an overwhelming need for such shelters in the LGBT homeless youth population. Um, this is from Carl Cicil- Siciliano, executive director of the Ali Fortney Center, which is the country's largest community center for LGBTQ homeless youth. Hey, if someone who was the you know, director for the largest center, community center for LGBT, is saying that this is something that's needed, I'm pretty sure he knows his numbers, he knows what's going on. I mean, they see the people that come and go. You get me? These aren't ideas. These are facts. Like they're I mean, years and years of homelessness. I don't even want to know how many people end up homeless as a result of coming out 
or being outed. So that is amazing. The opening of the first shelter for runaway, oh, there we go, 21 to 24, really? Homeless youth ages 21 to 24 is a major step towards progress, which I agree with. It's no secret, yes, we know that they are homeless, there's a lot of them. But I mean, like I said, that's a step in a great direction. And as it's pride, that's one of those things. I mean, it came right on the, the forefront of pride because it was at the end of May that the announcement was made just before June started. So great way to bring in pride, you know, <laughs> happy pride. In other news, on the subject of pride, last week, Wednesday, as I mentioned, Barbados Pride started. You can follow their Instagram for details on their events and things of that nature. They're f- wrapping up now as it is the end of the month. But their Instagram for the events and all the all things pride <laughs> that I've come across was Barbados Glad is B A R B A D O S G L A D. Okay, they're on Instagram. You can follow them. It's gay. It's great. I don't know how I missed this one, but Trinidad and Tobago started their pride on June twenty second with seven days of celebration, and it ends on the 29th. They also have an Instagram queer tt that you can go and follow them. They have a website queer tt.com that has like all their events and everything like that so i was reading one of their um posts and it says that this year's trinidad and tobago lgbt plus <laughs> pride celebration will be held under the banner of the trinidad and tobago pride arts festival and for the first time in its history encompass all the major celebrations of pride month in trinidad and tobago calendar events included workshops movie nights talent shows open mic night there's a hike parties and highly anticipated pride parade oh apparently it's a five week long celebration is being hailed by the lgbtq I community as a triumph of collaboration between the major entities which host pride events each year and non-LGBT plus allies alike. I mean, after their big win, our big win, I should say, the LGBTQ community in Trinidad, that is a great thing for them to be able to put on a pride event and, you know what I'm saying, just run with it, have fun and live in your colors. It's saying that festival coordinator Rudy Hanamji says that while members of the LGBT community still face discrimination, lack of access to fundamental rights and hate, there's still much for them to be proud of, which is absolutely true. I mean, you can't hate yourself because other people hate you. I know it's very common and it happens and people have self-doubt because what they're into and what they love and what they represent is not necessarily the quote-unquote norm. It's not necessarily what people are open to. It's not societally accepted. It's, you know what I'm saying, all these things. But at the same time, like like I said on a previous episode, like <laughs> live and love your truth. Like if you know who you are, if you're accepting who you are as you're finding out who you are, because I mean, we're all growing daily. So no one can say they completely know who they are because tomorrow might be something else. Life changes you. See what I'm saying? If you are accepting of who you are, like, love that shit. Live and love in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because your nation, wherever you live, isn't in support of you. Like, granted, they pass laws and all that. Like I said before, just because they pass laws does not mean that the citizens will uphold it. Does that mean the citizens respect it or care for it or anything of these, like, they still have their baka bush mentality. They still have their, you know, bigoted mentality, their homophobic mentality. They still have these thoughts. And unless we educate them, which is the whole point of it, bring light to it, shed light, visibility, let them know that, hey, I bleed the same way you bleed. If you cut me, I cut you. Guess what? Blood I got run. You know what I'm saying? There's no difference between us except I love differently. That's that's it. And it's not even necessarily a saying I love differently. I'm attracted to the same gender. I'm attracted to both genders. I'm attracted you know what I'm saying it does not matter I feel as if I was misgendered who cares at the end of the day you know what I'm saying like let people live their lives and just accept them for the great citizen that they are like whatever the case is you get me it's great to see that these countries are participating in pride like I've said before it's great to see that despite all the backlash that possibly comes with this and all the negative feedback and everything, all the negative things that come through, they are trying, they are prevailing, they are being successful at making a positive impact for the community. They're not letting society or the nation let them feel bad for being different, you know what I'm saying? And they're letting the youth essentially know that, hey, it's okay, we're here for you even if it's just for a week to recognize hey we have gay people here (laughs) we have trans people here we have bi people here it's at least they know that they are not alone you know what i'm saying you can make friends meet friends social networking all of that stuff that's like one of the things that i love about that's 
probably the one thing I like about the internet. The fact that you're able to look up and see that there are other people out there like you, especially for a community that's so, so large, but at the same time, small in its sense, because I mean, a lot of us are in the closet still, you get me? A lot of us are still battling with is this okay? Is this right? Should I act on this? So the fact that they're able to see, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, visibility is vital. Like as long as they're able to see that there are other people out there living their life, happily living their life as who they are, come out, live their life, whether they have the support of their family, support of their friends, or just, you know, a strong backbone, their strong like mentality, like, hey, this is me and this is what I'm doing and I'm not hurting anyone. So I'm going to live my truth. You get me? So shout out to Trinidad and Tobago. Sorry, I missed y'all. <laughs> you know, Barbados, uh, San Croix, Jamaica, all the islands that are doing pride. On the subject of Jamaica, you know, West Indian pride events, author Nicole Dennis Ben will be live with Jamaica's Pride. I spoke about her on a few episodes before. She's a lesbian um, author. She's a Jamaican lesbian author. Um, she wrote Here Comes the Sun. She's going to be at one of the pride events on August 6th in Jamaica. Flyer I saw on Instagram says, you know, Nicole Dennis Ben takes us this side of paradise. It's at 6 p.m. at the Courtly Auditorium. Admission is 1,000 Jamaican dollars. So if you're in Jamaica, August 6th, you want to go see her, you want to go show out for Pride, it's there. <laughs> I'm saying there's options, things to do if you like to read, read her book. It's a great read. And yeah, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to that. I'm, it's funny, I was wondering if they were going to have anybody that, you know, I've spoken about at any of the Pride events. And they, I mean, I saw something else about Marlon James. I didn't even get a chance to actually fully look into it. But I love that, you know what I'm saying, people are going back home after hearing that they left because of this. You get me? They left because, like, one of the reasons anyways. You know, people leave Jamaica and other countries for many different reasons. Come to America for a better opportunity, et cetera, et cetera. But the fact that they are still going back home because... Me personally, I can't imagine not going back home, like ever. Like, mm -mm. no, I've talked about this before. I remember on the first episode with Sugar, we were talking about how she goes home and sometimes she cold switch, you know what I'm saying? Because she's a grown ass man. <laughs> when you see her every other day here at Farin, but when she go home, she ton tones it down just a little bit, just so it's not too like, oh my gosh, for them. But the fact that, you know, people are still going home and all that stuff, that's great. On another note, these people president and their foolishness, like separating these kids from their parents. I don't watch the news. I tell y'all this all the time. Like there's nothing on the news that is for me. I don't want to know. It is nothing good. It's always bad news. It's like, unless it's celebrity news, which who really gives a fuck about that? I don't. But with everything going on with that, can we even talk about this girl on my show? <laughs> well, I'm going to talk about two people that I really like. It's going to be like a quick snippet and then off it because I'm not really trying to have no deep, long conversation about these two. But Nicki Minaj. Naj stated something about being an illegal immigrant and you know how she couldn't imagine what it would be like at five years old being torn from her parent because of that and all this and I'm just sitting here like anybody what you're whether you're an illegal immigrant or you you're a nationalized citizen you're born here whatever the case is as a child especially that young five years old or however old like as a child period shit to this day you know what i'm saying being quote unquote torn away from your parents like being separated from your parents forcefully and knowing that you might not ever see them again that is traumatic for anyone with a pulse like anyone with any kind of a heart that isn't being abused by their, even you sadly enough isn't even kids that are being abused by their parents still wants to be with their parent because that's your parent you know what i'm saying children love their parents unconditionally unconditionally it's one of those things that people always say that you know people sometimes have babies for the wrong reason like that's a whole nother subject for a whole nother time but duh girl like <laughs> nobody that's not news to anybody like if you get torn away from your family forcibly, of course you're going to be fucked up about that. Of course that's going to cause long-term psychological issues, probably trust issues, sociological issues, like all types of shit, you know what I'm saying? And as far as that president, I just, you know, that man, whatever. On another note, because somebody mentioned it, to, well, a couple people mentioned it to me, and I've been really trying to avoid speaking about this girl on a show because one, I just don't know. I don't know. I keep hearing walking trophy on the radio, and I even heard it when I went to a party. All I'm going to say on the topic of that is hood celebrities apparently signed to Epic Records. You go, girl. Good luck. Good job. Good job. <laughs> More bad news. A lot of tragic shit has been happening lately. If any of you have been on social media, like I said, I don't watch the news, but it's all over social media on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of that. You've seen 
all these killings, people are dying. I mean, death is natural part of life. It is the end. It has to happen, all of this. But when a life is taken intentionally before its time, especially out of violence, doesn't that take something from the person that is doing it? I, I just don't understand, like, these senseless senseless deaths that I've been hearing about lately. Like, that young man, Jr., in New York, that they murdered. A group of people dragged this little boy out, 15 years old, and murdered him on the side of the street in front of a bodega while the sun was out. Y'all are vicious. Y'all are vicious. Like, how do you how do you sleep with yourself? I mean, whatever the reason is that you felt like you were going out to do this, you're defending your sister, your family member, your, you, you know what I'm saying? Even if, like, the fucked up part about it to me, though, is whatever the backstory is as to why they were out to kill... That is one thing. The actual fact of them killing someone that was not their intended target is another thing. And the thing about this that bothers me is there's so many stories circulating this, so you don't know what exactly is happening. There's an investigation going on, so I mean, you guys can keep up with that however which way you see fit. I'm seeing that they're saying that the girlfriend or the sister, whatever the hell is, of the person, the girlfriend of the person that was intended, whatever the case is, So the person that was supposed to get killed, somebody was covering for him and set up this kid junior instead. And something about he was supposed to lend somebody five dollars and they found it like y'all got to do better. Y'all got to do better. You know what I'm saying? And the kid looks just like him. But I mean, when you look at it, there's so many like hispanic kids that look like that i know at least two kids that look like that you know what i'm saying like there was one picture of him with like a blowout like with his hair like out or whatever and there's another picture of him with braids and i was just like yo i know two kids that look like that like when i was growing up i I knew two people that look like that you know what i'm saying so mistaken identity is one thing but hearing that he was set up to save the other person like y'all all all need to go to jail to prison like all of y'all need to fucking rot like what the fuck? And then the rapper that was killed down here the other day, like another one with a million different stories circulating about what happened. Because first they said that, you know, somebody just followed him and it was a drive by. Then you're hearing that it was a robbery. Then you're hearing that somebody was following them and robbed him and whatever he fought, whatever the case is. Either way, another life is gone over bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Another life is gone over bullshit. And the thing about this specific one xxx tentacion like the thing that's bothered me the most about it is i personally have never heard any of his music and if i have i didn't know it was him i'm not gonna be one of those people who be like oh my god his music inspired me so much he touched me and he saved me whatever if he did that for you honestly and genuinely i'm happy for you i'm happy that he was able to help you i'm happy that you know what i'm saying he helped you get through a dark time or whatever the case it is i'm happy that you got some positivity from this person's existence and them perform like practicing their craft okay But there are so many people out there with this false narrative saying how that they were touched by this guy and how he helped them and da 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 because that's what other people are saying or that's because, you know what I'm saying, that's what they feel like they should say to get a little bit of clout or so people can feel sorry for them or whatever the case is. And the amount of people in Broward County talking about, you know, oh man, I'm mad the homie's gone, my homie, my friend, my... Y'all don't even know this man. Y'all met this man one time at a concert. Y'all saw him one time at a show. Your cousin's baby mama, sister, cousin, nephew, auntie, twice removed met him one time and you feel like y'all related now like i hate people like that yo like y'all feel like y'all have to jump on a bandwagon y'all have to get some kind of clout from a big name person or something of the case like dog let people rest in peace y'all dragging these people names up and down for yourself what is it doing for their family what are they benefiting from you coming out and saying i know this person and his memorial was today like it's wednesday when i'm recording so the 27th but his memorial was today in sunrise and i'm hearing that that shit was wrapped around the block you know what i'm saying the line to get in was two hours long which is expected he's a celebrity whatever human being etc the thing that pissed me off about that was they had a thing that stated that no cell phones were allowed. They had every right to say that. Every single fucking right to say, you cannot bring your cell phone to this memorial. For many different reasons. You can call somebody to come do some dumb shit. You can, you know, whatever. And then there was something else saying, no photographs of him in his casket. 
have some respect, people. I know some of y'all Jamaicans love taking pictures of dead bodies and caskets and post them on Facebook and all type of whatever y'all do it for, okay? If you taking pictures of somebody in a casket, keep that to yourself. <laughs> Unless somebody asks you for it. But even still, like, just have a little bit of respect, you get me? And there are people talking about some. they're going to try to figure out how to sneak their phones in. And for what? Why are you there? Are you there for a photo op? Are you there for a press release? Like, what are you there for? To say, hey, I'm on the scene and this is what's going on. Are you a reporter? Like... Dog, if you're going to show your respect, go and show and pay your respect to this person. Have respect for his family. Have respect for the fact that this is a life that is no longer here. Fuck the fact that he's a celebrity. Fuck the fact that he did music. Fuck all of that. This is another individual's life that was taken senselessly. If you know him, my condolences. If you don't know him, stop pretending you do. Like, that's fucked up. Just let people rest in peace, dog. If you don't know, like, I don't understand. Like, people just be trying to do shit for clout. Like, that's dumb to me. Like, that's that's selfish. Who, like, no, <laughs> it's dumb. But I hope the more service went off while I fell asleep, probably like just after I got home from work. So I don't know exactly how that ended. I heard that it was supposed to end at like six o'clock. But like I said, people are on Snapchat pulling up, crying, showing the big Megatron with his face and everything. Like, y'all doing too much. Like, y'all really be doing way too much for people who y'all really, 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 really don't know. Who don't know. Okay, put it like this people who don't know y'all. If that man don't know you by name, y'all don't know each other. Stop it. Y'all need to stop. Because that kid was, what, like 20 years old? Something so? How much of a life did this kid have? Granted, you can do a lot in 20 years, but he just busts. Like I said, my condolences. And y'all need to stop the senseless killings. Go to school. Read a book. Find love within yourself. Be 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 a positive impact on the world. Like, don't don't just dash away your life trying to chase money and, you know, do idle things. Like, it's, there's so many things in the world that y'all could be doing. And y'all out here worried about social media clout a lot of y'all on social media got all these likes and listens and whatever whatever and soundcloud and all this and y'all ain't doing nothing in real life like it looked good on paper it looked good on the internet but what is it really doing for you another senseless thing that i saw i'm not gonna say it's senseless because people feel like revenge isn't senseless hey whatever movado's 16 year old son just got charged with murder let y'all ponder on that movado's 16 year old son just got charged with murder there's a whole bunch of other charges but murder is the main charge that they're sticking him with i mean they, i think there's like arson and something else on there 16 whether he did it or not who knows there's conspiracy theories that he's taking a fall for his dad because his dad is on tour he's in america and all over the place doing shows or whatever and they're trying to get him to come back home so that he can do an interview or sit down with the cops and they just want to question him quote unquote and see you know his take on the events and whatever because the story behind it is that some people shot at Mav uh, Mavado, I think in Casava Peace or something, so. And it was him and his cousin. And I think the son was there. And then the next night or something, so, that person that suspected to shoot them, shoot at them, ends up dead. The house burned down, whatever, whatever. And Mavado fly out either the same night or the night before, something, so. But he flew out somewhere in the mix of that. And, you know, people talk, things happen, whatever, whatever. They apprehend the boy, they apprehend the cousin. And the son is being charged with murder, arson, and a whole bunch of other something. And they're trying to get Mavado to come back his attorney telling him he's on tour he needs to fulfill his duties abroad when he's done he can come back to talk listen 16 16 whether he did it or not that is an age to be involved into some shit like that like i said that young man in new york junior his he's 15 16 like yo listen i like my little happy boring life okay um none of them excitement that never did that one <laughs> for me at them age day mm -mm. i at least wait until i finished high school before i started carrying on with slack company on another topic of jail capleton was released from jail this is an old one but i thought it was done in washoe because you know they um he was released on bail and they were waiting trial and i was like wait a minute he went to trial that monday or whatever results came back but why he going to court again in july some shit going on because they said that they dropped the charges and then something else came up saying that the girl lied and how his lawyer was like coming out of police like listen y'all should have done y'all job y'all investigation y'all shouldn't have locked him up to begin with y'all should have asked the right questions this that and the third and the girl is saying that how she's getting um death threats and all types of assaults and whatever people are you know threatening her because of her allegations against capleton and all type of something and of course capleton come true and say yo if she getting death threats it's not from my people it's not me it's not my people we're not doing them type of something there. so whatever's going on with that like i said rape is not a joke it's not something you're supposed to joke about it's not something that you're supposed to falsely accuse people of it's not something you're supposed to do point blank period and funny enough the other day just 
a couple of days ago. Terry Crews is people are questioning Terry Crews because he's you know, speaking out on his experience of being assaulted. And I'm like, who gives a fuck if this man is 6, 7, 10, 500 pounds? Who cares how big this nigga is? Who cares if he's always taking his shirt off and flexing his titty muscles and winking and smiling and acting and... Fl- like, who cares? That does not mean that you should invite yourself to his genitalia. It does not mean that you should invite yourself to touch people inappropriately. It does not mean that you should invite yourself to kiss people, grab their butt, touch their dick, touch their vagina, grab a titty. None of that shit is okay. Like, I will pop off off indefinitely about people being assaulted because son personal space is personal space respect that shit if me and you vibing and i decide that i want to get all kissy kissy touchy touchy with you hey that's cool enough but don't assume that means i want to fuck you okay if we get to a point and you feel like damn i want to fuck but i know she want to fuck guess what your mouth works damn so what, what we finna do you know what I'm saying with y'all let me get some give me a look or right, you say something or if you try like you try to reach at my pants and i stop you guess what nigga don't do that shit again i'm not trying to do that i just want to kiss and touch on you that is okay if you don't feel comfortable with me kissing and touching on you guess what say something if you don't feel comfortable with someone kissing and touching on you say something if you feel like you're gonna want to fuck because they're touching on you and you don't think they want to fuck or they told you they don't want to have sex stop them it's okay assault isn't just sticking your penis in somebody or putting your penis in somebody's mouth or putting your vagina in somebody's mouth because women rape also that is not the only form of assault or rape that there is y'all have this narrative that unless it's sex it's not it's not a big deal you're violating someone's body point blank period even if it's words i know they say you know sticks and stones words may never harm me all that great stuff that shit affects people okay you talking to somebody in a sexual tone even after they've expressed to you that they are not interested and it's uncomfortable to them come on yo i know somebody that used to send me dick pictures all the time i used to be like ew like can you not can you not can you stop can you stop oh it was an accident it was an accident bruh really i do not want to see your ugly ass dick don't send me that shit like i don't want nobody dick picture if i don't ask you for it if i'm not actively involved with your dick don't send me a dick picture do not and that goes for many people some niggas don't want to see your little ugly ass dicks neither whether they're bottom or top or y'all used to talk like no if somebody if you send somebody a dick picture and they don't give you a gratifying response guess what they probably don't want to see it you know what i'm saying they lift that shit on red mm, it probably ended up in a group chat <laughs> like look at this nigga sending me a picture of his ugly ass dick again cut that shit out that is assault too like all of that constitutes you know what i'm saying like y'all need to realize boundaries and y'all need to respect boundaries i don't care if you're in a relationship with someone i don't care if y'all had sex before i don't care about none of that shit okay if you and somebody are talking or whatever the case is and if things start getting a little hot and heavy and you feel like you want to take it to the next step and they withdraw read body language if they say no listen Mm-mm. also works y'all know better y'all really do but y'all choose to ignore this somebody said some dumb shit about yeah if they're kissing on me or whatever and i force it then it's rape no shit sherlock no fucking shit anything forced is not done with consent Unless, you know, it's just super tight and y'all need some lube or whatever. Vaginal dryness is a real thing. Don't shame. But y'all y'all know what I'm talking about when I say that. Okay? So don't don't even try to play these dumb chorus. Oh, I thought... No, don't think. Ask. Find out for sure. Especially in the culture and everything that's going on right now. Y'all not living under a rock. Y'all should know that this shit is real. Okay? People are affected and a lot of people don't speak out about it. I can't be out here saying, hey, you have to tell people when you get molested. You should. But at the same time, I can understand why people don't. So whether you're Terry Cruz's size or you're 5'1 and 100 pounds soaking wet, assault is assault, abuse is abuse, rape is rape. Y'all need to stop with these narratives and thinking that only certain kind of people. What? Because he's a man, he can't get raped? Because he's a man, he can't get assaulted? Because he's a black man, he... Like, y'all sound dumb. Touching somebody's genitalia is a violation. If they did not invite it, if they did not welcome it, that is a violation. Whether they responded negatively towards it or whether they were in shock and didn't do anything, don't feel like that shit is okay. Because he could have been ignorant and whooped somebody's ass and guess what? He would have been the person that's wrong. He would have gotten arrested for assault. He would have gotten... Y'all don't think about these things. Y'all want to talk about, oh, you know, he's a big man. Can you imagine somebody actually like... Yes, I can, actually. Because niggas used to do dumb shit like that in high school all the time. Meat check and all of that. Like, that's one thing <laughs> Charlamagne and Envy were talking about that on the show the other day saying you know there's a difference if they do it with the back of the hand that's the meat check but if they palm it and grab and caress and gra- whatever the case is stop touching people private parts 
If they didn't invite you to them, if they don't welcome it, stop touching people inappropriately. Point blank, period. Y'all need to stop with this shit. It's like y'all feel like y'all are entitled to other people's bodies. No, you're entitled to your own. If you want to touch something, touch yourself. Go pick up a book. <laughs> Go buy a sex doll. Buy a blow up. Buy some pillows. Buy some, some silicone, some rubber, some plastic. Get the fuck out of here with that. Y'all need to stop, okay? Like, we need to take care of each other, whether it's as a community, as an individual, as a culture, as black people, white people, gender, whatever. Just realize that we're all humans. Point blank, period. Just show people respect. Stop violating people. On a subject of violations, though, Netflix fired their PR chief after he used the N-word. Whoa. Apparently, this guy's been working for um, Netflix for seven plus years, and it wasn't his first time using the word while he got fired, and I think that's probably the reason why he got fired. It wasn't even like, you know, he came out and called somebody the N-word or whatever. It was one of those things where they were having a discussion about sensitivity, you know, ethics and all of those. They're having a meeting, and he used the N-word. In a statement stating something like about sensitivity, I guess, context of the shows that they have on on Netflix and things of that nature. And the CEO, Reed Hastings, kind of was just like, all right, we're going to do a training course on this and say, hey, that's not okay. People have feelings about this word. Do not use this word. Put on kitty gloves, talk to this person, say, hey, we're giving you a bligh, basically. Don't use this word. People feel a way about this. We have black people working here. Don't use it, right? All right, bomb. Think story done, right? No, sir. I'm come back again and said the shit. And, you know, I mean, sacked his ass. And rightfully so. You don't... I've realized that people like to use this, oh, I didn't know excuse for when they do fuckery. I didn't know. Like, case in point, where I work, I'm a supervisor. I have employees who do dumb shit and will literally be like, oh, I didn't know. Really? Now, my manager is like, this is why y'all need documentation. This is why y'all need to sign paperwork. Every time y'all do a training, have them sign off. There's a summary of what the training is about. Have them write their name, sign it off, and there's a date on it. This is how we know that if we have an issue like this again in the future, they say, I didn't know, pull out the paperwork. Bomb. On this date, you sign this paper saying that you will not do this or you will adhere to this. So that's one of those things because i love when people say oh i didn't know really we had a conversation about this but if there's no proof that a conversation was had niggas can say i don't know till the kingdom come and all you can say is well we can try and talk about this again but if you really realize the repeat offenders y'all need to nip that shit in the butt and this is exactly what netflix did so i mean shout out to netflix because they saw that there was an issue and did something about it based on an article i was reading it says that jonathan friedland that's his name f-r-i friedland whatever how the hell you pronounce his name f-r-i I-E-D-L-A-N-D. Jonathan, that word, used the N-word in a meeting with other Netflix staffers with some of those staffers reporting the incident. So they told on his ass. On Friday, June 21st, Reed Hastings, Netflix CEO, sent an email announcing his departure. They wasted no fucking time. The guy came out and was talking about, you know, I'm leaving Netflix after seven years. Leaders have to do what's best beyond reproach for the company, the example we set. All of these things, you know, saying basically the company's doing what's best for the company in a situation like this which they are and i mean you can't be bitter about it because they they gave you a chance and it's funny because the ceo was saying that they shouldn't have given him a chance they're seeing now that if you felt comfortable comfortable enough to say it you should have been nipped like say the n-word why are you out here just dropping the word as it is you know what I'm saying some of y'all just bold with black people in the room or even if black people aren't in the room you no it's not for you it is not for you don't say it i don't understand people like y'all so entitled just let people have it if you can't if you can't say it you can't say it point blank period respect that's all it comes down to he said some shady shit about you know uh rise high fall fast all in a couple of words nigga what the fuck all on a couple of words on a couple of racial slurs bro like that's not cool netflix how much money netflix make and yeah yeah how many people how many well <laughs> somebody said he was probably saying that niggas sharing the damn passwords <laughs> and aren't signing up for a call <laughs> that's not funny but it's funny because y'all really do be sharing I, I can't like i am too and it's what nine dollars a month is cheap and y'all got movies y'all got tv shows y'all got you know cartoons it's a bunch of shit on netflix for you to watch and it's $15 a month if you want to get the extra package. I'm out here plugging. But you know what I'm saying? Like, Netflix is cheap. It's probably the cheapest bill y'all ever have, month to month. And niggas is like, nah, bruh. You got Netflix? Let me get your password. Don't give everybody a password because, you know, if two people are more watching, I'm going to get kicked out. Whatever. Y'all be taking bad things, Mac joke, and I'm here to laugh at it. I'm sorry. Let me read you, y'all, the memo that Hastings sent to the staff. It says, all. Oh, 
I've made a decision to let go of Jonathan. Jonathan contributed greatly in many years, but his descriptive use of the N-word on at least two occasions at work showed unacceptably low racial awareness and sensitivity, and it is not in line with our values as a company. Bomb. Y'all hear that? I understand why companies don't understand that. There are other companies that would have, you know, said some other dumb shit. The fact that it said it showed unacceptably low racial awareness and sensitivity. That's exactly what it is. So it says the first incident was several months ago in a PR meeting about sensitive words, nigga. Several people afterwards told him how inappropriate and hurtful his use of the N-word was, and Jonathan apologized to those that had been in the meeting. We hope this was an awful anomaly, never to be repeated. Three months later, he spoke to a meeting of our black employees at Netflix group and did not bring it up, which was understood by many in the meeting to mean he didn't care and didn't accept accountability for his words. The second incident, which I only heard about this week, was a few days after the first incident. This time, Jonathan said the N-word again to two of our black employees in HR who were trying to help him deal with the original offense. The second incident confirmed a deep lack of understanding and convinced me to let Jonathan go now. Okay, so you said nigga in one meeting. Couple days later, some black people put you to the side and said, hey, we're gonna talk to you real quick about your use of the N-word and why it's not okay. And in that conversation, you said nigga again. My guy. (laughs) You just like the word. First of all, you're at work and you're using this word. So how many times you drop this word outside of work? The letter goes on to say, as I reflect on this at this first incident, I should have done more to use it as a learning moment for everyone at Netflix about how painful and ugly that word is and that it should not be used. I realize that my privilege has made me intellectualize or otherwise minimize race issues like this. I need to set a better example by learning and listening more so I can be the leader we need. Bruh. Spot on. Whoever wrote this for you, pay them well because this is something that a lot of people don't realize status people with status and money don't realize social issues because in an essence it does not directly affect them rich black people like the, the real rich black people i'm not talking about celebrities i'm talking about wealthy black people some of them have so much wealth that they either they don't care that people look at them a certain way or they're in a circle or in a bubble where these looks don't happen because of wealth but that doesn't mean that other black people aren't experiencing this you get me and this from i'm assuming this is a white man saying that listen my privilege has made me intellectualize or otherwise minimize race issues so he's saying that he basically looks at race like from an intellectual standpoint like okay you can't use this word it's not nice right and that's that's probably the end of it that's the butt of it for him it's not the backstory of why it's not nice or why it hurtful or why it seemed why it's deemed as racist or like the fact that he's able to admit to that he gets mad props for that it goes on to say that depending on where you live or grew up in the world understanding and sensitivities are around the history and use of the n-word can vary like i said debate on the use of the word is active around the world example as use of it in popular media like music and film have created some confusion as to whether or not there's ever a time when the use of the n-word is acceptable for non-black people the word should not be spoken as there is almost no context in which it is appropriate or constructive even when singing a song or reading a script yo can we say that again for the people in the fucking back who did not realize that you cannot say the n-word even if your favorite fucking rapper sings it don't say it bleep it out think of it as the edited version the radio cut don't say the shit period like why is that so hard for y'all that's like kids when they sing in songs and they know the the clean version and they be beeping out songs and you singing out of what you wait what (laughs) why is that so hard for y'all to do as adults don't say it point blank period there's not a way to neutralize the emotion and history behind the word in any context the use of the phrase n-word quotations was created as a euphemism and the norm with the intention of providing an acceptable replacement and moving people away from using the specific word when a person violates this norm it creates resentment intense frustration and great offense for many our show dear white people covers some of this ground you know shout out to him for plugging a netflix show so going forward we are going to find ways to educate and help our employees broadly understand the main difficulty the man ugh, the many difficult ways that race nationality gender identity and privilege play out in society and our organization we seek to be great at inclusion across many dimensions and these incidents show we are uneven at best we have already started to engage outside experts to help us learn faster jonathan has been a great contributor blah 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 whatever whatever many of us have worked closely with him for a long time and have mixed emotions unfortunately his lack of judgment in this area was too big for him to remain we are deeply what well, we care deeply about our employees feelings 
feelings and safe employees. Oh, Jesus Christ, I can't read tonight. We care deeply about our employees feeling safe and supported at Netflix. Much of this information will be in the press, blah, 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 blah. Shout out to the CEO. Everything he said in this is everything that you need to hear. Don't say the shit if you're not black. Point blank, period. No matter if it's in a song, if it, you're reenacting a script, if you're reading a script, don't say the shit out loud. It's that simple. Y'all act like y'all gonna die if y'all can't say nigga. Y'all just, y'all just wanna say it. Just because you can't. And I think that's exactly what it is. The feeling that black people can do something that you can't is the problem. And those people, those people are the ones that say it with their non-black friends. I am convinced. So shout out to them. I was like, holy shit when I first saw it because I was like, 2018 people still out here dropping the N-word? Like y'all really don't realize that that's a problem? And the fact that people are trying to talk to you and help you to understand why it's a problem and you're honestly, I can imagine how the context of the conversation went. You know what I'm saying? Why can't I say nigga? Bro, you just said it. Okay, but why can't I say it though? Because people don't feel good when you say it. And the fact that they had a meeting with black people, black employees, and he didn't bring it up, I understand the feeling of he doesn't care or he didn't think he did something wrong because that would have been the perfect time to bring up that subject, to bring up that incident, to have it addressed and resolved because I guess too many black people were in the room and he would have felt like maybe, maybe, maybe I was wrong because so many people in this room are saying the same thing that HR or whoever else have told me about this topic white hr and black and black people they all feel the same way about this i might be wrong like take your l dog like my thing about this now is how do you get hired somewhere else no matter how good you are at your job how do you get hired somewhere else after something like this happens especially something so public people gonna know they're gonna ask oh look at your resume netflix seven years what happened you can't get a recommendation from netflix can you i'm pretty sure they're not gonna leave that out y'all need to think about the things that y'all are doing so the last topic of the night is gonna be definition i am being petty i know i'm being petty i like being petty i'm a grown-ass petty ass person i don't care judge me so i am beyond over people saying things to the narrative of situationship is not a relationship because yes it is (laughs) <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna read, you know, from my favorite place in the world, google.com. When you type in relationship, I'm gonna read to y'all what a relationship is, okay? The definition of a relationship by Google's, it's a noun. The way in which two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected or the state of being connected, right? Here's a sample sentence. The study will assess the relationship between unemployment and political studies. You see that? Okay, now we got synonyms. Connection, relation, association, link, correlation, correspondence, parallel, alliance, bond, interconnection, right? The relationship between diet and diabetes. You see that? Okay. Next one. The state of being connected by blood or marriage. They can trace their relationship to a common ancestor. Family, family connection, blood ties, blood relationship, kinship, affinity. Ah, you see? Another one. The way in which two or more people or organizations regard and behave toward each other. The landlord-tenant relationship. Relationship. Can y'all stop sounding dumb on the internet? Can y'all stop sounding dumb in real life? Stop saying you're in a situationship and not a relationship. If you're saying you're in a situationship, okay, whatever, cool. But do not say it in the context that I am not in a relationship, I'm in a situationship. You're in a relationship. It might not be a committed relationship. It might not be a co- like a monogamous relationship. It might not be a long-term relationship. But it's still a relationship. It's between two people. It's how you interact with people. Even if it's an estranged relationship. Y'all sound dumb. Stop it. Stop it. Y'all sound so dumb. There was an article. That's what triggered it. That's really what triggered triggered it. This girl is in a relationship. I forgot what one of these blog sites it was on. And she's talking about her three year long situationship and how they're not in a relationship and how it works for them. And it's long distance. And that's why because the guy didn't want to be in a relationship. He doesn't want you to be his girlfriend. That is a type of of relationship husband and wife brother and sister mother and daughter father and son auntie uncle cousin grandma nephew these are all relationships you and the nigga you fucking that's a relationship it's a sexual relationship stop <laughs> y'all sound so fucking dumb. i'm in a situation ship we're not in a relationship girl shut up i'm not even gonna talk about what else goes on beyond that for three years y'all involved with each other and it, y'all want to consider that is not a relationship whatever y'all y'all grown i guess but please when y'all are using words google them okay like it's it's free it's there for you it's your friend always and forever google will be your friend i don't believe they'll make you start paying for google but until they do it is free it is at your fingertips y'all on y'all phones all motherfucking day long apple you can slide to the left or whatever and the search bar up top type it in guess what google will come up you ain't gotta do too much if y'all got siri siri will go on google for you 
you too. Hey Alexa, whatever the fuck. Like Google, it's okay. But we're gonna wrap this up. Please don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Pointless Talks. Subscribe to our podcast, Pointless Talks on SoundCloud, Apple Music, Google Play Music, etc. If you like us, rate us, give us five stars, leaving a bad mind feeling them to on a self. And just like every other week, whether you got here on purpose or by fate, thank you again for tuning in. Thank <laughs> you.